Well, hey there, friends. It's uh, it's Ben again, and I am recording a video here uh, for the differential equations class, and we're going to talk about the notion of the superposition principle, and then from that, the method of undetermined coefficients. In both cases, what we really are in need of is finding solutions to non-homogeneous linear ordinary differential equations. Okay, so let's take a look at our main principle we have to think about and so that is what we refer to as the superposition principle and first of all we have to start off with a, a linear operator a linear differential operator, L of D. So think about it as a polynomial. So if you wanted to talk about the differential equation, y double prime plus y equals uh, sine, y, sine x or something, then you would say that your L of D is D squared plus one. Because when you take L, that D squared plus one and multiply it by y, as you distribute through, you'll get d squared y, and that's y double prime, plus one y, and that's going to be just the plus y. So in any case, you've got this linear operator, and corresponding to it, you have the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation, all right? And then we want to talk about the non-homogeneous differential equation here. And if you can find one solution to that, just one, then <clears throat> knowing the y sub h is going to tell you the entire set of all possible solutions because the general solution for the non-homogeneous will simply be that particular solution plus the general solution that will have the coefficients, you know, a e to the t and b e to the minus t or whatever it happens to be, all right? So a really good question that you might have here is why? Why will that turn, to work, turn out to work? Well, let's suppose that y1 and y2 are both solutions to, uh, this L of D Y equals zero, okay? So if we take Y1 minus Y2 and form a new function just by looking at that, and that Y1 minus Y2 is gonna be just the difference between those two functions. If you hit that with your L of D, then you'll have L of D Y1 minus L of D Y2. But we said Y1 and Y2 are both, so, are both solutions to, and I have messed it up and I don't feel like re-recording this. They are both solutions to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So that means that you will get F of X here and f of x here. And if that's the case, when you subtract them, you get zero. That means that y1 minus y2 I, um, is a solution to the L of d y equals zero. Now, because we just picked some particular two solutions, y1, y2, then that's really saying that, that uh, you could have picked any two solutions. So to be super general here and think about every possible y1 and every possible y2, then <clears throat> you're going to be able to start with any given solution and add just that general solution to the homogeneous equation, and that will be your general solution, okay? That probably felt a little theoretical, 
right? So maybe a good idea here is to have a real quick example. And I don't want this to be super complicated. So I am going to be, um, I'm going to be setting this up to be like that. All right. So the Y sub H, y'all know how to figure that out. And it would turn out to be, to be a e to the X plus B e to the minus X. I know I didn't go through the steps of that, but hey, you've seen it elsewhere. So uh, now if we were to choose the Y sub P and I'm just picking out something that will work, pick a, picking out minus X, then our general solution is gonna be minus X plus A e to the X plus B e to the minus X. If you're saying, oh gosh, I don't believe that. Well, let's calculate real quick. Y prime is gonna be minus one plus A e to the X minus B e to the minus X. And Y double prime then is gonna be just A e to the X minus, I'm sorry, plus B e to the minus X. So when we plug in Y double prime minus Y, we'll have a e to the x plus b e to the minus x minus minus x uh, plus a e to the x plus b e to the minus x. And so you see how these will cancel out since we're subtracting and these will cancel out and you have a minus of a minus x to get you just that plus x. Well, up here with this, I could also have chosen instead to have minus x plus uh, seven e to the x. And all that would have changed is what's going on with the a and the b, right? So consequently, we have this uh, kind of a general solution going on here for uh, the uh, non-homogeneous differential equations. If we can find just one solution, we can then find all the others by just adding the general solution to the homogeneous equation. Sounds simple enough. If you're magic and you can just guess what the answers are, uh, well, maybe it would be nice if I taught you some magic and uh, showed you how to guess what the answers are. That's what the method of undetermined coefficients essentially does, is to tell you how to magically guess the right answer. But you guess smart, and then you adjust your answer to make sure that you're right. So let's take a look here at what we're looking at for this. So, All right, that looks like a wall of text. So bear with me a little bit because I, I know it's gonna seem kind of intimidating. So our method of undetermined coefficients that we've got here, um, there is another name for it that nobody but me seems to use. I like to refer to it as the method of annihilators. Okay, annihilator is kind of a neat word. All we mean by annihilator is something that will turn a function into zero, okay? So we're gonna start out here with some L of D Y, so some differential equation on the left-hand side uh, is equal to F of T. So we're trying to solve a non-homogeneous differential equation. Now, if that was a zero over there, we kind of know what to do. All right, we might not be able to solve all of them, but we know how to do, how to do it in a lot of cases. Well, uh, um, then if we take a look at the F of T there, and we know that none of the pieces of the homogeneous solution appear in it, then what we do is to try to form a Y of P 
to just be a little bit more general form of what you've got for your f of t. So for example here, if I started with my y double prime plus y being equal to t squared, all right, I can figure out that y sub h has to be cosine t and sine t. I mean, linear combinations of cosine and sine, right? And we know that that is trig functions and t squared is a polynomial. So because those are not really similar, then, well, put it like this, they don't share the same r values. The r values for polynomials are always zero. The r values for uh, sines and cosines are always imaginary numbers. So because those don't share any, we put together what our y sub p should be. And we say, eh, that's a t squared. I'm only going to differentiate it there. So I'm going to expect for the degree to be no more than t squared. And we just guess that it's a t squared plus b t plus c. And then we plug back in and try to figure out what's a, b, and c. So uh, let me pause. Hey, Steph, could you close the door to the downstairs? I'm trying to record a video. Thank you. I didn't want to get up and have to reposition. <laughs>